welcome to a new episode of uh, Pat's Chat. Today with me is someone from Singapore, it's uh, Jocelyn Go. I thank you very much, Jocelyn, for joining me today. Uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, so Jocelyn, you're the founder of uh, Just Go Life. Uh, you're an engagement video producer and coach, and also you help companies uh, doing video live streams. Uh, that's uh, mm -hmm. very interesting. I think it's quite a good time uh, nowadays to do that. <laughs> um, how, how is the situation in, in Singapore right now? Can you give me a quick update? Um, well, the, well, we have a lot of measures in place to, to try to keep everyone safe, but to still have like, um, <clears throat> businesses and work still going on, um, as much as possible. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, of course, businesses are somewhat affected and, um, I think overall the market is, well, a lot of business owners are looking to to see how they can actually move some of their operations or outreach online more, yeah. more so than before, for sure. Of course, yeah. makes sense. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so let's see. Um, I know you have a, a bachelor in management and uh, then you work in retail and hospitality for quite some years. Uh, maybe you give mm -hmm. us some insights in your early years uh, of your work life and uh, what you like so much about the retail. Uh, okay. So when I graduated, I was very clear that I didn't want a office-based kind of job. Um, after experiencing some temporary work before university, I, I realized that you know an office-based job is not for me. So, so when I graduated, I actually applied to um, more unique jobs that were not really office-based. So mainly they are they were management roles in hospitality and in the retail space and it just happens that my first choice of uh, um, of the the role that I picked happens to be in hospitality so um, I was there for about three years and after that I decided I wanted to try out uh, retail and uh, being a girl who likes shopping and with a lot of interest in products so I thought retail would be more suitable for me and uh, so after that, I started a career in retail for about eight years, um, having worked with um, a lot of uh, major fashion brands and uh, beauty brands and uh, yeah, global brands in retail management in Singapore. So and after that, I decided to use my experience and expertise in retail and I, I went into a lecturer and trainer role with uh, one of the polytechnics in Singapore. Okay. Yeah, and that's where I picked up um, more training and uh, coaching expertise. And as well as uh, that was where my job exposed me to um, the China's ecosystem of um, e-commerce and content marketing. Yeah. Mm. Well, what were you lecturing in this um, Polytechnic University? Um, well, I was employed to do retail-related training for the industry, uh, but as the economy evolved um, and the traditional uh, retail skills were no longer enough for the industry, um, the institute also evolved into like uh, e-commerce and digital marketing. Mm. So uh, eventually, I also, I also had to uh, learn about those areas and also be able to uh, teach and help the industry with uh, these areas. Mm. I see. So is this also like the shift that you saw in the maybe, what is it, 10, 10 12 years experience that you have in retail, the, the shift to, to e-commerce? Uh, yes. Um, at that point of time when the institute, when we started to implement, it was, it was still, it was about how many, it was about four, four years back, mm -hmm. four or five years back. So it was still the the start of like um, e-commerce platforms. It was like the growth period for e-commerce platforms, uh, marketplace platforms that uh, sellers could uh, easily create a store in an e in a in a marketplace and and then you know list their products and start selling. So that was like the period where businesses were slowly trying to go online and also uh, individuals were also trying to go online mm. to create some um, extra income for themselves. So it yeah. was like the, 
the initial growth stage at that time. Mm. And of course, this platform uh, have a huge advantage because you don't need to build your own store, right? Or your own web page. Yes. You can just use one of one of those uh, platforms. Yes. Um, so, and I, yeah. Sorry, you can People on. were not so concerned about branding at that time. No, everyone mm -hmm. was just looking at sales. But uh, I think now, a few years later, again, it has shifted a little bit. Uh, people start to get concerned about um, having their own database, <clears throat> creating their own branding, having their own traffic. So definitely the game has uh, evolved and actually the game has actually, I would say it has it grown inside. Been, so besides, yeah. Yeah, besides selling on marketplaces, people want to have their own uh, e-commerce websites as well. Hmm, okay. And during that time, uh, you came across the, the Alibaba e-commerce uh, platform, which is, uh, of course, uh, uh, an exciting platform and tool. Uh, tell us a bit more about your experience with that and what, what you did with, uh, with Alibaba itself. Mm. So I was, um, I was the account manager uh, at my institute to manage the the programs that we have with Alibaba. So Alibaba has an education arm called Taobao University, where uh, in China, they help their online sellers to sell more, sell better, create better content, engage more customers. Um, and, and of course, at that time, and I think still, they are, they are globally recognized as one of the strongest e-commerce platforms. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so my institute actually had an exclusive uh, agreement with them to, to bring in the programs to Singapore to educate the local retailers. And I was managing the account. So, um, so at that time, that opportunity exposed me a lot to what they were doing, what, are the what were the strategies behind what Alibaba does. Uh, like knowing what they do as a consumer and versus understanding why they are doing all that, you know, the, their strategies, their, their mindsets, their attitudes, um, really exposed me to, to really like what, what's ahead of what we know besides what we see in our local market. And then from there, that's where I started to see a lot of uh, potential for video and uh, live video content. Um, and so I wanted to give a booster to the Singapore market in terms of this area. So, and that is so, that's why I left my, my job to set up uh, Just Go Live. Uh, okay, so that, that was the yeah. trigger. Basically, that um, what is kind of academy, you said, that help uh, like sellers on the Alibaba platform to sell more, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, can, can you tell me a, a bit more about the uh, Alibaba HQ? Because you told me like um, you were there a couple of times, uh, like five times in Hangzhou, is that? Uh, can, you, can, <laughs> can you share a bit more of that experience, like how, how that worked, how, how that was? Okay. So, um, so yeah, because we organized um, study trips for business owners and CEOs to visit, to learn from uh, the top sellers in in. Alibaba's platform, which is called Taobao. Uh, so, um, a part of the trip consists of um, visiting the Alibaba HQ and to understand um, their culture. Uh, what I observe is that the, the, the staff, even though they have a huge number of people, in general, they're all very committed uh, to the company's culture and <clears throat> they're all, they all have a very strong conviction in in what they are doing and uh, in, in how they really have the heart to help sellers <coughs> and to help uh, more people to be able to earn money with uh, e-commerce. And so um, the very interesting thing about Alibaba is they, 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 they are not just an e-commerce platform. They have a whole ecosystem behind to support everything they have. They have a financial arm, they have a logistics arm, they have a cloud arm, you know. So everything works together to, to actually support the entire e-commerce uh, system. Mm -hmm. And the in another interesting thing would be that they're actually not charging people for selling on their Taobao platform. So like a regular individual can just go online, get listed, and they actually are not charging 
charging these uh, individual sellers any any fees at all to list and sell their products. Uh, and that's how they, in a way, that's how they hope to, I think, help their people. And at the same time, it's a great way for them to get data, which is actually what their focus is. Mm. So, so yeah. you mean the payment is done in uh, data and not in uh, like uh, a monetary currency? No, no, no. As in they are collecting customer data through, through yeah. this system of free to sell, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so making barriers very low for people to become uh, sellers. Okay, that's, an, that's interesting. Because at the end of the day, what, yeah. Yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, what you want is more people to be using the platform, right? And with more consumer activity, all the data that they are getting is very valuable. Wow, that's that's interesting. Yeah. Is that you know? Is that still the case today? So, is the, as a seller, you can still go on Taobao and sell for free. I mean, there's no commission that you have to pay. Yeah, it should be. So, the as a seller, the only if you if you choose to spend. The main spending would be like some of the marketing tools available, like to oh, appear okay. in search, to appear in the banner. I mean, those will be paid. But if you that. are not going for paid methods, yeah, in general, it's free. It's free to list and uh, free to free to sell. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So um, uh, after after Alibaba um, or Taobao, a lot more of these e-commerce platforms uh, popped up. Also here in uh, Southeast Asia, a little more, more localized, I would say, uh, like uh, Shopee and uh, Lazada. I think. Um, did did that change anything? I mean, do you still see in in uh, Singapore that Taobao is like? one of the major platforms or did that also shift a bit to the new to new products that are on the market? Uh, I, I wouldn't say Taobao is a major platform for Singapore because firstly mm -hmm. Taobao is actually designed for China. Mm -hmm. yeah. The entire platform is in Mandarin. So if you can't read Mandarin, you, are, you, you pretty much can't access that platform. Well, I know there are people who use Google Translate for it, but that's like a lot of effort <laughs> to do it. <laughs> okay, Actually yes. shop there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so in local context, Lazada and Shopee are very much modeled mm -hmm. like Taobao. So okay. what I observed is, yeah. I mean, Lazada was bought over by Alibaba Group, so it makes sense. Mm, okay. Yeah. So it's maybe and, also in a way for like Singaporean market to... Uh, venture into the Chinese market? Uh, it, well, what I know now is that's not how it happens. <laughs> oh, it does not happen. Okay. Yeah, so China sellers can sell on the Lazada platform to Southeast Asia, but the reverse mm. is not. The reverse is not the same. <laughs> okay, I understand. Okay. And I guess that's a challenge for the Southeast Asian sellers because it's very easy for the China sellers to undercut the yeah. price yes. online. Yeah, so I, I think local sellers really need to up their game in terms of engaging with the consumers and customer service, after sales service, the promptness of delivery. I think these are all the key things that local sellers uh, have as the reason mm -hmm. to, to be ahead of the listings from China. Okay, okay. Which yeah. brings us, of course, exactly to uh, what you're doing, what your topic is. Um, so producing the, the, the videos, engagement videos. Uh, and let's talk first a bit about the live streaming um, platforms. Because besides uh, the real e-commerce platforms that we just discussed, there's like other platforms that offering now also live streaming, uh, like uh, uh, Facebook, like uh, YouTube also. Um, so how, how do you compare this product? So what is your recommendation like, which is really the best uh, way of... Um, uh, bringing the engagement videos or the live streams to, to the market or to the people in the end. Okay, so so in, in China, live stream selling started with Taobao because they're already an e-commerce platform. All they had to do was uh, <coughs> plug in a live stream function and the entire e-commerce system supports the live stream buying. Um, in Southeast Asia, the live stream buying um, trend started very much on Facebook. And Facebook is not an e-commerce platform. Mm -hmm. 
with all the necessary functions. So like what's happening is that buying and ordering are all a uh, very manual process currently. So most of the sellers are, well, I think they do get pretty good viewership and traffic and um, sales from Facebook live selling, but they do face um, the technical issue of um, very manual ordering process, which takes up a lot of manpower. I understand. Uh, yeah. Also like the payments, of, right? Because there's no payment gateway currently. I, I, I'm, I think Facebook is working on something or it's already there. But... Uh, yes, I think they started some beta project in Thailand. Mm. And uh, well, I can't see because I can't really access Thailand pages. Oh. Yeah, n neither will I understand the language if I do. Yeah. Find. <laughs> <laughs> so, but based on what Facebook is doing, I, I, I assume that Thailand is probably one of the highest uh, in terms of numbers in when it comes to Facebook live selling. Yeah. Um, secondly, yes, they, I think they acquired an e-commerce startup yeah, to, to, to try to expand this part in Facebook. So, I mean, we're not sure how soon mm. they're going to implement things. It's not easy being a global platform because payment laws and guidelines are different in every country in every country yeah yeah so it's probably not that easy i mean they might have to work with a, mm. a gateway that's already globally you know like a stripe yeah. or paypal but yeah. still it is uh, already popular you said in in some countries um so what is your recommendation uh, when you do live stream or live selling i mean this this some some concept is uh, interestingly is is available for i don't know how many years like before we just have it on uh, on tv right so you watch to like a specific show and then you have to call a number to to order what whatever weird things were offered at that time um yeah um, but those uh, shows were like quite costly um, in, in production and it took like, I don't know, half an hour to run the show, something like that. So you had to buy the TV time. Um, I, I see that as like a huge advantage nowadays. Like everyone can just go online and do live, live videos more or less. Yeah. So, um, of course, the simplest way is people just go live from their phones, mm -hmm. which is as simple as can which is as simple as it can get if you have the intention to engage your consumers with live video. So what I do is a bit different because in Singapore or Southeast Asian context now, I think most people see live video as just um, a, a direct way to do selling. Um, what I help my clients do is, is a bit like what you mentioned. It's like having your own uh, TV show online. <laughs> and it's not expensive because you don't need to involve the, you know, the broadcast station or anything. Yeah. You can create your own, you can like technically create your own um, quality content online. So what I help my clients do, which is different from the direct selling model, is, is to build their personal brand and their brand um, to, to engage more consumers and to, to have more live interactions with them. But they may not necessarily have any direct selling involved. Uh, and the format of the entire live stream is, is done very much like uh, a TV show or a talk show uh, with uh, visual aids, uh, uh, text, graphics. Um, yeah, so, so basically, yeah, it's like you have your own TV shows. You know, it's the era of self-media, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. I mean, we started with YouTube, right? Yeah, YouTube true. started it, but it's pre-recorded video. I mean, you can also do YouTube live. In the meantime. Uh, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, depending on where your audience is, um, if, if I see a lot of um, YouTubers from the West, they do YouTube live because that's where their audience are, their subscribers are. Uh, in, in Southeast Asia, I see the trend trending towards more still on Facebook for mm -hmm. live video. Okay. Yeah, because that's where your audience is. Mm. Um, um, I think that's that's a it's a very good takeaway, right, from this uh, chat. Yeah, um, like start mm. your um, live streams where your audience is, right? Basically, that's the easiest way to to engage because you have your connections already on that on that uh, specific platform. 
Yes, correct. So if if the businesses, I have clients where businesses are on the younger crowd or they are trying to attract the younger crowd, they also go live on Instagram. Oh, okay, yeah. I I mean, this is the yeah. the newer things like Instagram, TikTok, um, this kind of platforms which can be used also. Um, so. So let's let's talk about your company. So you mentioned already what you're doing. Um, you started this company only last year, I think. So you're self-employed. You're the entrepreneur since since last year. How how was that step for you to like move from uh, being hired in several companies to like uh, going that step to independency? Yeah. Well. Well, I actually planned it for about a year before I actually you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, resign from full-time employment so um, before that I was already working on a few projects as a side hustle mm -hmm. uh, you know so I have I had some testimonials I had some uh, POC done uh, so well I would say it was a gradual move because I was already side hustling and I was uh, you know making more friends in the circle in the entrepreneur circle so we sort of have a uh, support community you know where we share ideas and help each other so i would say in terms of the transition well so far i'm liking it because i'm someone who values having fulfillment and satisfaction in 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 what i do and so far what i've been able to do uh, in terms of video content and for my clients are, are things that i've I have actually uh, aimed to do, which is like, which is like why I created and started this um, business. So um, I think I'm slowly just taking things one step at a time. Um, of course, with the current situation, um, people who know what I do, I mean, more people have been approaching me. So um, I hope that um, I actually get to help more companies to, to, start using live video to, to you know, benefit their branding and their sales and their engagement with customers. Okay, yeah, of course. I hope, I hope that too. I mean, uh, <laughs> I saw some of your samples. They look uh, pretty awesome. Um, so I think yeah, people should discover uh, what you do. And then maybe, as I said before, it's like probably the best time to uh, do this kind of uh, branding and, and marketing also. What 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 is uh, the biggest struggles you came up so far? What what were uh, the challenges you were facing in this one or two years that you're an entrepreneur? Um, well, I guess the challenge is it, well, it was a challenge, but maybe it's less of a challenge now. Now that in the current situation, people see more need for it. I think earlier, before the virus situation <laughs> happened. Um, there are companies who tend to see live video as, you know, just a secondary um, kind of strategy like, oh, I'll, I'll, we'll do it if we have time. You know, we'll do it if there's a lot of, if we, you know, we'll do it if, we'll do it if. So I think now the if is much smaller because that's where people are spending their time on. You know, in fact, I've noticed that ever since the virus in the situation, um, and people are discouraged from going out or some countries are in lockdown, the viewership for Facebook live video has like gone up in general. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I noticed the, <clears throat> like the, the pages that I, always, that I always observe, in fact, their viewership has gone up and people are still buying online, mm. you know, uh, because... Maybe yeah. even more now, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah that, people that... are buying online, yeah. either through e-commerce or through Facebook live. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think for companies who are facing a challenge now with their physical businesses, it's definitely, well, they, they really need to step out of their comfort yeah. zone now, I yeah. guess. Uh, yeah. It's, a, it's, it's really a good point because, uh, like, recently yeah. I got a lot of these pictures. I see it on, on, on LinkedIn also, like, who is uh, responsible for, like, uh, companies going digital and you can choose between the, the CEO, the CIO, the CTO, and coronavirus. And so, COVID. yeah, correct. <laughs> so, um, it's kind of uh, funny, but uh, I think it's uh, it has a certain truth uh, uh, behind it. Um, so, I think it's also good, good to see that uh, companies 
like yours are um, well becoming more popular. So there is a new business <laughs> that develops also out of this uh, crisis and new opportunities that that arise for sure. Yeah, I mean, if you reference China, right? Their their consumer market is not so badly affected. I think partly because they already have this ecosystem <laughs> up and running. And this entire, I mean, from what I understand, e-commerce got much, very much popularized in China because of SaaS. Oh, I see. Yeah. So the so, first, you know, yeah. Corona <laughs> now is like the next wave of <laughs> virus, which brings attention to again, something else in the market. Mm. Yeah, Alibaba was already running for about two years before SaaS hit China and that's how uh, it really got uh, popularized with the common folk because when people couldn't go out, uh, that's how they started to see the importance and the need of um, online online buying and online um, purchasing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. So now they, yeah. you mean they, they're ready? So probably next crisis we will have because of the virus, uh, we will be ready in our areas also because now it's uh, the time to uh, to go digital, <laughs> to go uh, e-commerce for all those who haven't done yet. Yeah, I think it now it like it forces people to look at things differently and to get creative and to see, uh, you know, how to do things in new ways, in online ways. That's great. I think that's a good last sentence. Uh, go online. Um, and please reach out to uh, uh, Jocelyn for your engagement videos. I will post uh, the links and how to uh, connect with you. Uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, letting us know your stories, your experience and uh, uh, how you become like an entrepreneur. Uh, thanks so much, Jocelyn, for your time. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> Thanks. Wish you all the best. And also you, thank uh, you. wish you all the best. Thanks to the audience for uh, watching this video. Uh, please stay safe. And uh, I see you at the next past chat. Have a good day. This episode was brought to you by Hopnop. Hopnop is a community of like-minded professionals, freelancers, entrepreneurs, founders, business owners, and local influencers that meet monthly at unique venues to network, mix, and mingle. Live networking events are the best way to meet new people in your city and make new connections. Hopnop, your network is your net worth. Grow your circle of influence.